Thank you, Lady Paul. Ahoy and welcome, ye developers and sailors of inner and open source. I sure hope you be fine and things are just jolly Roger. I kind of miss the times when us pirates just had eye patches. Meh. So, I would like to share a story with you. A tale of adventure, of treasure, and betrayal. So, it goes like this here. Once upon a time, a fine crew of software developers they be working for Daimler TSS, which is a 100% ship's boat, you know, an IT subsidiary of Daimler, who in turn is a builder of most formidable vessels which roam the waters of the world. Well, mostly land, actually, but let's not nitpick here, okay? So these developers, they lived quite happily and were successful in their endeavors to hide and find again nuggets of gold in their programs. For many years, these developers had been roaming the waters which were close to their home port successfully and their bounties were handsome. But they grew more and more inquisitive as is a pirate developer's duty, and they became more and more anxious to go out and explore the seven seas of inner source and open source. Well, okay, the two seas, really, but they're really, really vast seas, so they kind of should count as seven. Okay. However, there were many barriers in their ways to these seas. The seas can be treacherous and full of legal shallows. Were they even allowed to sail these waters? What are the rules of engagement? You know, even pirates have rules and a code of honor, okay? And what would the pirate's high command and supreme admiralty say to this? So they set out on their journey to answer these questions. And um, I'm going to cut a bit short here because this is actually kind of a long story in itself. So in the end, the high command was convinced that it was the right thing to do and in the best interest of everyone to indeed sail the seas of inner source and open source. And they got together and sealed the deal. They wrote up on the finest parchment a letter of mark that would lay the foundation of all inner and open source explorations to come. They called it the FOSS Manifesto. A jester once called it the Manifosto. <laughs> it's actually not so bad. I kind of like it. So, Light shone upon this fine document when it was signed and sealed. And I happen to have it here with me. And I would like to show it to you. You see, when you introduce new rules, the challenge is that you want everyone to know about it. And so it is a good idea to take these new rules to the market square of your pirate's nest a company and read them out loud. So let's open it and let's see. Oh, ah, here it is, the manifesto. So let's see. Um, I'm going to deviate from the pirate team here for a moment. Um, our Daimler TSS FOSS Manifesto has three parts to it. 
the first one here is a preamble in order to sort of uh, set the stage to give the manifesto a solemn note and to show that the high command you know the the board of management uh, and our internal FOSS competence group, hearing called uh, the House of FOSS. You know, that's sort of like uh, the FOSS programs office, if you will, uh, that these are fully committed to the FOSS manifesto. Um, it also states the goals, the overall goals of the manifesto, for example, that we want to be active members of the open source community. So I'm gonna, not going to read it out uh, word by word to you because I guess you can read it for yourself. So if um, by the looks of it, if this looks a little bit similar to you, then uh, perhaps you have seen and read the Treaty on the European Union, the Lisbon Treaty on the European Union. I mean, who hasn't, right? Um, this is a little bit similar, just you know, from the big wording. But make no mistake, the purpose of the preamble is not just to be pretty words. Um, a, a change, a big change in a, in a company requires, well, time for one, right? And uh, the bigger the company, the more time it requires, simple as that. And for two, a change is always most successful if it is supported by senior management and by the crew. If, it, if only the crew wanted, then it may be difficult to get it through. And if only senior management wanted, they may have the power to sort of push it. But if the people are not convinced, it probably won't be very successful, right? Okay, so that's why the preamble here is important. And that's why it shows, look, this comes from the people at the base and by management. is fully backed up by management and they support it as well. All right, preamble. Now, uh, the next two parts are the company's principles and the employee's principles. So here, first, the company principles. So a lot of times our employees are still a bit uncertain if they are allowed to have their open source, their own open source projects, uh, if they are allowed to contribute to other open source projects, and if they can do inner source as well with you know parts of the company that are com somewhere completely different somewhere else different department because that hasn't always been the case that you were allowed to do open source and inner source for the past so for various reasons right so the intention of the company principles here is not only to show the employees that they're indeed allowed to do it but actually sends them on a mission to do exactly that so uh, let's take a closer look. The first principle encourages employees to use, contribute to, and create projects, both in inner and open source endeavors. Now, a lot of times employees will tell you, yeah, that's all fine and well, but I have to work productively in my customer project I don't have the time to work on open or inner source on side, right? Even though it may be related to my work. So it is the purpose of principle number two here to let the employees know that it actually is okay for them to take the time to work on such projects as well. Now, principle number three lets the employees know that they are supposed to learn and grow with FOSS, take the time to do so. Um, you know, attend online courses or real, real courses when that is possible again. For example, attend conferences and um, even give a talk perhaps, right? So principle number four strives to promote visibility, for example, through active membership and participation in uh, open source foundations. So at Daimler TSS, we are, for example, founding member of the Eclipse Foundation Europe. Yay, which you know I think is really cool. It's really cool that the Eclipse Foundation has moved to Europe for one, and it's really cool that we got the opportunity to be a part of it from the beginning as founding members. Awesome. So we're also a member of the Linux Foundation and a couple more. So, and now lastly, principle number five 
is to state that we shall support our mothership Daimler in its FOSS endeavors as well. You know, that is sort of our main purpose, why we exist, right? As Daimler TSS, as a uh, IT subsidiary is to support Daimler. So the, these are the company principles. Let's go one further, look at the principles from an employee point of view. So they basically ask of an employee to become more active in the FOSS world and to think FOSS first. So uh, principle number one says, please look for alternatives in inner and open source first before you write code for which there already is a nice solution out there. That is not necessary. Wasting time reinventing the wheel, right? Number two says, please be active in inner source. And number three, likewise, please be active in open source. So that's the what I said, you know, it sends them on a mission to do exactly that. Please, you know, you're, you're allowed to, and so please go ahead and do it, all right? Um, and number four, lastly, is sort of a mini code of conduct. Please be nice. Don't be evil, as a certain company put it years and years ago. So uh, yeah, we all, we do have a, you know, much more elaborate code of conduct that is uh, more detailed, uh, but this here is just very condensed. Be nice, behave responsibly, okay? So to sum it up, we hope that our FOSS manifesto and its principles will help to facilitate the cultural change in Daimler TSS from a formerly we develop our own code company towards an open and inner source savvy company yeah so that's it we are working on making this many fosso known in the whole company and in the mothership as well so uh stay tuned it will be released in daimler it kind of as we speak like will officially come out today or monday well we'll see so um yeah um oh that, so i guess there was no betrayal in the story huh eh, eh, sorry so if you have any questions any riddles that befuddle you you can write them down on a piece of paper like this Roll it up, put it, roll it up, put it in an empty bottle, put a cork on it, and throw it into the chat porthole, okay? I mean, maybe don't actually throw it, all right? Um, we can answer some questions. I guess we have maybe one minute. I don't know, but I will be in the breakout session room just right after this. And uh, we will also have a panel discussion where we can take some more questions as well. All right, pirate folks. Thanks for sailing along. May there be always wind in your sails and a bottle of rum by your side. Uh, <laughs> we'll do fine. <laughs> Smell you around. Thank you very much, Wolfgang, uh, for your very entertaining and good talk.